Hello and welcome to LLO Gamers. I'm Rob Turner. This is my first video for the channel, so thanks to Pete and Louis for getting me involved. And I'm going to be doing a series of TechIt tutorials. For those of you that don't know, TechIt is the multiplayer version of the Technic Pack, which is a collection of mods for Minecraft. Mods included are industrial craft, rail craft, build craft, red power, equivalent exchange. There's other stuff as well, all sorts of crazy mods that add a lot of new crazy technical stuff to uh, Minecraft. Uh, as you may notice, I do have a texture pack installed. I'm using Sfax Pure BD Craft, which is a pretty popular Tekkit one. Uh, a lot of the other Tekkit ones I've seen don't seem to get updated whenever there's a new version, and so they have missing textures and stuff like that. So this is quite a good one. Also, you'll see my skin I'm using is uh, Ryu from the Street Fighter games, because, well, why not? And yeah, you might notice the crazy interface going on here. This is um, the Not Enough Items mod, which basically, uh, at default, is in cheat mode. And as you can see here, you've got all these little icons. You can set the time of day, you can turn rain on and off, you can change to creative mode. You can even click here to heal the player. Uh, also, if I come down here and clear this search bar, you'll see that there are pages and pages and pages of all the items that are available with the Technic Pack and TechIt. And as you can see, there's a hell of a lot. All kind of different crazy shapes that you can make using the Red Power mod. So you can uh, have a lot of different possibilities with building, which is pretty interesting. But also, it has this bar, as you saw before. If you basically type anything into it, say if I write sword, it shows you all the different types of swords you can make. And if you click, hover over one and press R, it shows you the recipes of how to make them, which is pretty handy indeed, as I'm sure you'll see. There you go, red matter sword, that's a little spoiler for something later on. Uh, yeah, also, the other thing you will notice is if I find an item on here and right click on it gives you one in your inventory left click it you get a whole stack likewise you can also drag stuff over to this side click on it and it deletes it uh, all this stuff is all sort of very cheaty hence the name cheat mode but I always personally play it legit because I don't really see the satisfaction in making all this cool stuff if you've spawned it in yourself. So if you go to options down here, go to your world options and click on cheat mode, change it to recipe mode, all the cheaty stuff on the side's gone and you can no longer spawn stuff in, but if you just click on it, it will give you the recipe still, which is very, very handy indeed. So if I get out of there, other thing you'll notice, top right hand corner, there's a little mini map with some waypoints on it. If you look over there, you can see one over there. I've got another portal hidden in the jungle uh, with a nice little waypoint. To uh, access those and to add waypoints, you press the full stop button and it brings up this little menu. Click on waypoints here, click on add. There's a bar that you can put the name that you want to call the waypoint, change the color with these little sliders. Click OK, and it's that simple. You've got a new waypoint. Uh, also, one of the first things you want to do is check death point in this menu. Make sure it's enabled. I'm pretty sure it starts off as default is disabled. And this is very, very handy feature, because if you're out in the middle of nowhere exploring and you, you, know, you get blown up by a creeper, uh, you've got don't had no idea where you were, no idea how to get back there because you were in the middle of nowhere. It basically gives you another waypoint on your list that's a little red cross instead of a coloured icon, and that way you can find your way back and you don't lose all your gear. But the one thing you'll have to remember is it they kind of stack. You could end up with potentially with loads of death points. So as long as you go into remove, and it will just be on the bottom here, you basically click on whatever ones you want to remove, which will just be the death point and then click remove and it will be gone. 
because you don't want to end up with loads of death points and no way of knowing which was the one that you're trying to get back to. So yeah, there you go, that's a few little tips for you. Got a few doggies here look, that I found on my travels. Uh, I actually spawned in the jungle over here. Came over, saw this little river in this nice little flat area. Thought it was a pretty good place to s start a base. Made a tiny little shack, literally just for shelter while I was mining. Went down there, did all your basic first mining. Got a load of good stuff here. Uh, got some obsidian, been to the nether, got some glowstone. As you can see, I've got quite a few diamonds. But uh, there's a handy thing in the equivalent exchange mod you can make that basically helps you find diamonds. I'll explain that a bit more in a minute. But yeah, so uh, new blocks and stuff that are involved in Tech It. I'm sure you want to know all about that. You've got a lot of new ores you can find. You've got copper, tin, silver, tungsten. You've got nickelite, uh, uranium, which you can use to make nuclear reactors, which is pretty cool. You can see I've uh, smelted a few of these ones already. Uh, you get these gems, sapphires, rubies and emeralds. Uh, you can use them to make weapons and tools. They're s and armor as well, I think. Uh, they're very similar to uh, diamond in the respect that they're just as quick. They mine things as quick and the sword is as powerful. But they don't last quite as long. And if you're using a pick made out of these, you can't mine obsidian either. So that's worth remembering other new natural spawning blocks. You've got marble and basalt, which you can use both of those to make bricks, the same way you make stone bricks. And they're pretty good um, building blocks. They look quite cool. You've got a new type of wood, which is rubber wood, which you will need a lot of when you start making machines with the industrial craft mod. Because you, uh, you get rubber from the trees and use it to make insulated cables, and you use those uh, to power a lot of your machines. You also use them to make electronic circuits which go in all of the machines. So you'll be using a lot of rubber. So what I've actually done to show you about those, I found some rubber trees in the world, cut them down and planted them just outside over here. You can tell what rubber trees look like. You can normally see them from quite far away because they have this little two, two bits high sticking out of the top. Kind of looks like a fist giving someone the middle finger. And uh, if you look up here, you'll notice these little yellow blobs as well. That's where you get the sticky resin from, which you will need. I'll, I'll uh, explain that to you in a bit more detail in a minute. But yeah, yeah, back to uh, the diamonds, how I found diamonds. The uh, equivalent exchange mod has these things you can make here called covalence dust. I mean, I'm not actually going to make them because as you can see I've already got them, but I'll show you how they're made. If I go to the search bar, Covey. Yes, so over here, the first one is just basically full of cobble and one bit of charcoal, and that makes you 40 for each time you craft that. Next level up is one iron and one redstone, and the next level up is coal and a diamond. So uh, I only got the uh, high level one recently because obviously I didn't have the diamond in the first place. But, uh, what you, I used them for is to make this handy little thing here which is called a divining rod. And uh, basically the way you make that is a stick with the first level covalence dust all the way around the outside like that. And then you can level it up to a medium level one by just putting the divining rod in the middle and the next level dust and then so on to the last one. And what that is used for, it basically everything in equivalent exchange and all the sort of vanilla Minecraft blocks and anything that spawns naturally in Tekit has a EMC value, as you can see here. Tungsten's very high, nickelite's not so high but it, you get quite a lot of it. It, uh, uranium is fairly high, but as you'll see, if you look at the diamond, a diamond is worth 8,000. And uh, basically the divining rod, if you look somewhere and right click, it tells you the best level of, well the best EMC value in the area in front of you. Uh, and uh, at the moment I've got the highest level divining rod, which I made after finding those diamonds, but medium is good enough. 
but if you press G, you can scroll through the low range, mid range, and high range. That's obviously only if you've got the high one. But uh, basically, you've got a range is three by three by three when it's on short range, sixteen by three by three, in the medium range, and the full range is sixty four by three by three. So you sort of wander around, pick somewhere to click, and it will tell you the EMC value. So basically, if you go right down to the level where diamonds spawn, which is levels 1 to 16, and you sort of stop strip mining about clicking randomly until you get a value of 8,000. And that basically means in that direction you will find some diamond. And it saves a lot of time and a lot of stuff in these mods is very expensive and does cost a lot of diamond. So uh, this is basically the best way to give you a little head start, otherwise you could spend hours and hours and hours and then not really get any tech at stuff done. So you might as well just be playing vanilla Minecraft. So, you know, I made one of these, got myself a load of diamond and uh, yeah, job done. So next thing, back to the rubber. I'm going to show you how to get hold of some. What you do, you get some wooden planks and you make a tree tap. You do that by making this formation. There you go, a tree tap. Stick that in my inventory. And then what you want to do, oh, it's dark out there, never mind. Oh, my mouse is being funny. So yeah, you go up to the rubber trees and the uh, you find the little yellow blobs. Right click on them with the tree tap. And that gives you sticky resin, which is this stuff. Oh, a bit more came out then. I've got three that time. Yeah, also, sometimes the blobs are higher up, like under the leaves. So if you go around the edges and uh, do this, sometimes you will find more. And once you've got all the yellow blobs off the trees, they will respawn eventually as well. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to go around all of these trees. I think I'll probably stop recording and then pick up once I've done it all. So I'll see you in a second. Right, so there we go. I've done that. As you can see in my inventory there, I've got 13 sticky resin now. Which is okay. Some of the trees didn't have any on. Some of them had a bit. They all look a bit dodged now. Kind of mutilated. But, you know, there you go. It has to be done. Oh, rubber tree sapling, always very handy. Right, so if we go back in here, the way you turn the sticky resin into rubber, you smelt it. But I'm not just going to use the normal furnace. Uh, there are electric furnaces and higher level ones that you can make, but we haven't got that far yet. So what I'm going to do is make an iron furnace. You can do that in a few ways. Well, there's two ways, I think. You can... Uh, have I got any iron on me? You can either upgrade an old furnace by putting bits around it. Yeah, that's how you do it, an iron furnace. Or you can do it the same as a normal furnace and just have iron all the way around. So I'm going to do it this way just because, why not? So if I stick that down up here and basically it just works a lot f faster than a normal furnace so if I stick some of my sticky resin in there you'll see it goes a fair bit faster than a normal furnace so I'll leave that going in fact I think I'm going to get rid of one of these make another iron furnace just because I can because there's another thing I need to make which I might as well get smelting now which is refined iron which you use for a, a few things I think you use it in electronic circuits and stuff like that if I can remember and uh 
Yeah, best way to do that. You basically, if you re-smelt iron again, you get refined iron. So I'm gonna stick some of that in there. And there you go. We've got those smelting away nicely. Right, so uh come back to that in a minute when it's done. Right, so that's done now. I've got my rubber, my refined iron, and a few other bits and pieces that I'm going to need. And now I'm going to show you how to make the major components for all the tier 1 machines in the industrial craft mod. You've got a macerator, an electric furnace, an extractor and a compressor. They're the main four I'm going to make. Uh, I'm going to do that in the next episode. But I'm going to show you how to make all the bits for it. Because you've got to make quite a lot of them. Uh, and some of them are quite expensive. I haven't got enough stuff for them. I need a lot more rubber. So I'm going to show you how to make them all. Make one of the two main things. And then uh, I'm going to make all the rest off camera. Because you don't want to watch me making all the same things over and over again. Because it's boring as hell. So first of all, you can start off with some copper cables. So if you put three copper across the middle, you get uninsulated copper cables. Put rubber around the outside like so and you get copper cables. So I'm going to use all six of these straight away so it gives you an idea that I'm going to need quite a lot. Stick one of your refined iron in the middle and some redstone either side. You get an electric circuit. Electronic circuit, sorry. If you take your refined iron around the outside in the shape of like you make a furnace, you get a machine block. So yeah, I need both of these go in all four of the machines I was talking about. So you can see I've got a bit of work ahead of me because I need loads of rubber. But there's an easy way I can get loads more rubber without having to wait ages cutting down trees and sort of waiting for the orange blobs to reform. But what I can do is make an energy condenser from the equivalent exchange mod. See, the equivalent exchange mod is all to do with the EMC values of stuff. I mean, as well as making crazy, like, magical items that give you special abilities and stuff, it also is used to transmute items into other items using the EMC values. So, uh, the best way to explain this to you is basically to show you. So, to start with, I have to make something called an alchemical chest, which you put a chest in the middle, all three of your types of covalence dust, they have to be in this order from uh, the lowest to the highest. You can tell by the EMC value, so if you forget which colours which, it's really easy. Then you need stone, that's smooth stone, either side, and normal iron at the bottom. And sorry, no, the chest goes at the bottom, and you need a diamond in the middle. That's the one. So, alchemical chest. See, this isn't the actual thing I want to show you, but this is pretty cool in itself, so I'm just going to show you what it does. It's basically a normal chest. doesn't take up as much space as a double, but it's even bigger than a double. It's pretty cool. It's a massive chest. Uh, but that's not good enough. And it's falling down the stairs. But what I want, really, is much cooler. You put in the alchemical chest... You uh, put obsidian in the corners, and yeah, this one's pretty expensive, because uh, I need four more diamonds to fill up there. And you have the energy condenser. So, if I plonk that down, what you do is if you put an item in the top left-hand corner, and put other items in, say I put in a bit of coal, gives you a tiny little bit there. It's basically burnt the bit of coal and it's put EM EMC into here. And when you've got enough stuff in there to fill it right up to the EMC value of a diamond, which is 8192 as you can see there, it will plonk another diamond in here. So for instance, you know, if I whack a few bits of copper in, you know, it only does tiny amounts. But if you go back to here, so some of the new ores that you find in the world, tungsten, 16,000, pretty handy. Uranium, 4,000. This nickelite, it's only 128, but I've got quite a lot of that. 
Uh, the tungsten doesn't really actually have much of a value except for its EMC value. And the uranium and the nickelite are used in mods that, well, and used for things that I'm not really going to do for quite a while, I don't think. And by then I'm going to have quarries up that basically mine stuff for you. And, uh, yeah, so I'll get loads of that back. Don't really need it for now. And just as a good example to show you what this thing can do, if I whack some of this stuff in, say the nickelite, a couple of stacks of nickelite, burning up and you get a diamond out of about a stack that's you know pretty good it's basically just taking all the EMC and transforming it into whatever's there so then if I put in this uranium and this tungsten bang 18 diamonds so now I'm back up to 22 diamonds so yeah that's a pretty cool piece of kit I'm sure you'll agree um, so yeah, that's basically it for this episode. In the, the next one I'm going to make the machines, show you what they do, show you how to power them, get some generators and stuff, uh, probably a battery box to hold the power. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make a little system, try and automate it with some pipes and stuff. It's going to be pretty cool. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, like and Like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if leave a comment if you want if there's anything you want to uh me to try and teach in tech it anything you've heard about or seen that you want me to show you um i'll give it a go no promises because i'm not exactly a complete pro but uh yeah we'll see what happens again thanks for watching and i'll see you next time